so next concept is so today we are going to discuss about uh, how to start sap and how to stop sap so what is the sequence in start sap and stop sap and uh, so if you have the time we'll discuss about uh, client administration client admin introduction we are going to discuss if we have time okay so first uh, we'll discuss about how to start sap so see here so how to start sap Yeah, see here and uh, so whenever we install windows 7 or windows 8 or windows 10 some uh, like uh, some icons are created at desktop like uh, um, my computer recycle bin and uh, like uh, networks so like some uh, default icons are created in desktop whenever we install yes uh, whenever we install OS successfully some uh -huh. default icons are created at uh, desktop okay so if you take windows 7 or windows 8 or windows 10 so whatever it may be in the same way whenever we install sap this is sap startup process So whenever we install SAP successfully, two icons are created at desktop. So only like two icon, two icons, not one. Uh, two icons are automatically created at desktop. So those are the first one is SAP MMC SAP logon Anjali can you mute yourself? yeah just meet your from your side okay thank you so uh, whenever we install sap uh, two icons are created at desktop so these two are sap mmc and uh, sap logon these two icons are automatically created uh, this is for sap server And this is for SAP the interface. So this is for SAP server. This is for SAP logger interface. It means so. So if you want to log into SAP, compulsory we need to use this interface, SAP logger. So the separate application is there. So in that application only, so by using that application only, we are able to log in. Okay, so for example, if you take Gmail, there is no separate software for Gmail. So if you have the browser like Google Chrome or Internet Explorer, or Mozilla, uh, like uh, from uh, any of these browser, we, we are able to log into Gmail. But there is no separate logon pad for Gmail. The separate logon pad for like Yahoo Mail. Okay, 
so but if you take sap so we have separate logon interface is there sap log that is called as sap logon pad okay so through the sap logon pad only we are able to log into sap so in sap mmc so the list of servers are available in sap mmc so mmc stands for microsoft management console it means so whenever we install sap on windows systems then only we got sap mmc microsoft management console so this is only for servers list of servers we are able to see in sap mmc this is for this is for only interface user interface through sap login only we are able to log into sap okay so these two icons are created in desktop along with the default icons like uh, so whenever we install sap on 2008 server in windows it server for example whenever we install as windows whenever we install an sap sap and windows 2008 server so my computer at, at desktop my computer is there and networks networks and a recycle bin so along with uh, these icons sap mmc and uh, sap logon also created so these are from sap these are from uh, windows okay so this is so whenever we install sap so these two icons are created desktop automatically see here i will show you so see here uh, sap mmc but here logon is not there so logon they created in windows 7 system so in windows 7 we access sap okay so which is installed on windows 2008 server this is windows 2008 server okay so here they are not installed sap logon they install on windows 7 yeah so we are able to access so see here so we install sap logon on windows 7 actually sap is installed on windows 2008 server okay so how it is possible to access okay why because we assign the ip address of the sap install system see here this is you can see the ip address so 123 176 43 88 SAP installed system IP address we assigned here in SAP logon. So that's why we are able to access SAP. But actually, this is Windows 7. In Windows 7, we are not able to install SAP. Okay, SAP should be installed on Windows 2003 server, 2008 server, 2012 server only. But here you can access. Why? Because so we assigned the IP address, SAP installed IP address. That's why we are able to access from Windows 7. Okay, so see here. So SAP MMC management console. So this is uh, from a Windows system. This is from SAP. This is uh, SAP related icon. This is Windows related icon. Okay. Whenever we install SAP, SAP management and SAP login pad also there. But login pad nowadays SAP login pad is separate. So we install separately. Okay. So management console is there. So I'm going to stop the server.
okay so server is shut down okay so the first one is uh, how to start sap so first two. so uh, this is sap install system to the net server sap install system so if we try to log in sap through sap login pad actually this is uh, so i i just i double click on this one so what happened i got error message why because So why because the server is down so that's right okay so not reach the server is not reached why because just now we, we down the server it means so so whenever the server is running then only we are able to log in sap okay so see here in properties this is ip address sap install system ip address so see here 123.176.388 so just now we shut down the server that's why we are not able to connect it okay if the server is running then only we are able to log into sap so first we need to start the server then only we click on sap logon so first we need to start the server so see here first go to sap install system this is a sap install system double click on sap mmc Uh, this is uh, sap mmc already we discussed sap main management console sap like uh, uh, microsoft management console this is so uh, microsoft management console this is available on only windows okay so just to expand sap systems so uh, just expand this one okay so this is the uh, first one is uh, that's only diagnosis uh, this is only for diagnosis only for uh, health checking purpose so second so ds4 already we discussed no sap sid system id at the time of sap installation we need to assign sid so here uh, they assign ds4 so that is accepted why because uh, the sid is having two alpha characters one numeric okay it starts with alpha that's why this is accepted and i want to start the server ds4 ds4 is our server da is only for diagnosis that is not server only for diagnosis okay so this is the main server ds4 is the main server okay i want to start the server i just right click on the server and here all task is there just click on all task and start just click on start and click on okay so here we got uh, uh, one like uh, 300 seconds that is the default time means so uh, so if the server is not started within 300 seconds we got error time out error okay so now so i click on okay and it has the password admin password here i am going to assign the password and press enter so actually here we have three colors we have three colors So gray color so that is server is in down so next one yellow starting server is starting so finally green color started so we have three colors so whenever we got uh, whenever the server is in gray color so that is the server is in down status so uh, whenever the server is in yellow just now the server is starting it's not started completely it's starting level only so whenever we got us green so the server is started successfully and after green we need to wait to up to all work process are should be in waiting status
should be in wait status okay so we have three colors in sap startup process so gray color that is nothing but down yellow so server is just now starting so whenever we got green server is started after green we need to wait some time why because all server should be all our process server should be wait status so see here okay i think we are already in green so it, it got green so see here before that so this is a color ds4 color is this gray color okay so gray yellow green so just expand this one and expand sap server so this is a instance see here this is the server sid server name this is server name and this is a database and this is instance this is a central instance okay so expand sap server zero so here uh, like uh, for database there is no number why because only one database for all sap modules so if our organization having 20 modules 20 modules only one database okay uh, see here sap server zero sap server one so these are instances these are instances these are instances so instance range from already we discussed with a double zero to double nine is the instance range okay so that's why we we have number so but database having only one i mean so the entire server having only one database that's why there is no need any number but instances are 100 that's why then we need to number for identification okay so this is so I expand and just click on sap above what process tables about what process tables so this one just click on this one for checking the what process are in which status click on about what process tables see here so almost all work process are in waiting status so then only we confirm the server is completely started Okay, so apart from 0 to 6, 15 means 16 work process apart from 16 work process one or two running that's not a problem But major work process are should be in waiting status then only The server is uh, working. It's good properly Okay, so this time you can try to log into SAP uh, This is this is a logon just double click on this logon Yes we got before that we got an error message not reached why because that time the server is down but we try to log in that time we got error but here present the server is running so when i double click on sap logon it's open okay so first we need to start the server then only try to log into sap logon okay so this is and here on sequence is there actually this is the external process how to start sap from desktop but the thing is what are the things are happened behind of the desktop so in okay behind of the desktop so what are the things are happened so what happened the first one is voice collector is started So next one is a database the next one is message server and a dispatcher work process and work process 
Next one is uh, dialogue. Okay, so this is a sequence. And the message server and uh, our dialogue, uh, dispatch server process are available in central instance. This is central. Okay, so this is a sequence. So first two. Well, OS collector collect the resources for start SAP. It means so uh, it check out the profile. So we have a profile that is a startup profile. So like, uh, so we have a startup profile. So we have separate concept for profile, startup profile, instance profile, and uh, and uh, uh, that is a uh, default sorry default profile, default profile, startup profile, and instance profile. Three profiles are there. We we'll discuss uh, separately. There is a separate concept is there. A voice collector collect the resources for start SAP. Like it collect the like it check out the, the startup profile is available or not in OS 7 and it check out the, the like the space and everything so means the, the startup profile uh, like the files are available or not in OS 7 so everything is uh, uh, responsible of OS collector after everything is okay then database is going to be stored so next one is database after OS collector checking the the services all services are running or not so this is these are the responsibility of voice collector then database is going to be start so database so automatically started so if you want if you start the server database and sap both are started no need to start the database separately okay when now right click on the server ds4 and click on start the database and the sap also going to be started Okay, so after OS collector database is started. So database check out like the space, like uh, the space. Okay, so everything is uh, responsible for the database. And next one is the central instance. Why? Because already we discussed it. So central instance is the is the, the first instance in double zero to double nine instances. So the central instance is comes with the SAP. Okay, in central instance we have message server is there. And a dispatcher or process after message server, so dispatcher or process is going to be start. Okay, and finally, if we have dialog instance, so the dialog instance is started lastly. The first voice collector is started, then database is started, then central instance is started. In central instance, message server is started first, then dispatcher is started. Already we discussed it, so the request should be comes into message server then only it goes to dispatcher okay so that's why first message server then dispatcher plus workload disk plus workload this is a disk plus workload so disk plus workload finally if our server having dialog instance dialog instance is going to be start finally so this is a sequence this is sap startup sequence behind of the screen okay we are not able to see that the process, but this is a process internally. So in uh, like uh, so, just go to SAP MMC, right click on it, uh, all tasks are started. But behind the screen, so this is the process is going to be okay. Uh, this is SAP startup process. This one. So next one is a uh, SAP shutdown process.
So, and one more thing, very important thing is uh, uh, here uh, only we have only uh, DS4, okay, no problem. But the thing is, uh, so whenever we have uh, like uh, two more servers, okay, so this is. So DS5. And uh, DS6. DS6. So we have three servers. So DS4, DS5, DS6. So first we start a DS4, okay, right, we just right click on it and alt or start, okay, immediately DS5, right click on it, alt or and start, so next, immediately, so go to a DS6, select this one and right click on it and alt or start, actually this is not correct process, so once the server is started successfully, means all workers are in waiting status, then only we, we need to move to second the server if the second server is completely started then only we move to third server so what happened if I started three servers at a time like first go to DS4 right click alt or start immediately DS5 alt or start DS6 right click alt or start what happened the three servers are crashed so that's why my suggestion is first assist start the ds4 server if the server is started means we whenever we confirm the server is started means all workers are in waiting status then go to ds4 then go to ds5 so we need to maintain a minimum 10 minutes so we need to maintain minimum 10 minutes okay so that is a very very important point that one uh, this is uh, how to start sap And next one is uh, how to stop SAP. How to stop SAP. Okay, and one more thing. So see here in SAP after SAP is server is successfully started don't close this window don't close this window so my so suggestion is just to minimize this one just to minimize this one don't close this and next one is sap stop stop how to stop sap so in sap stop and actually in sap start just go to sap mmc right click i mean so double click on this one this one is uh, this is the pop up window is displayed now but here already we minimize this one so that's why I go to SAP MMC means so just to clear, maximize the SAP MMC no need to double click on the SAP MMC why because that is already open that is the servers are already running okay uh, so here this is a SAP MMC I want to stop a DS4 server I want to stop second server DS4 so this is supported only this is the server DS4 server I want to stop just right click on it so all does Stop. So this is a process for stop SAP. In desktop, from desktop, how to stop SAP? Just uh, select the server. Actually, here only we have only one server. If the server, if the, our organization having uh, more than one, like uh, so DS5, DS6, DS7 also there. So first we need to select the server. Which server we want to we want to stop? Okay, so from list of servers, you need to select which server you want to stop. So here, um, I want to stop, I'm going to stop DS4 server. That's why just uh, click on DS4 that is selected. Right click, Alt or start. This is Alt or stop. Okay, so this is.
this is a process salt as stop okay so leave it 5 minutes after click on stop leave it 5 minutes that is going to be the server is going to be down okay don't refresh at the time of stop start and stop also okay leave it 5 minutes okay so this is the process from desktop how to start sap and internally what happened this is quite uh, opposite of sap start start a process OS collector. Then database. Then message server. Dispatcher plus work process. This plus work. If we have dialog instance, dialog. This is a quite opposite of startup process. Let's see here. Backward areas. Okay, so first two, whenever we stop the server, the first two, dialogue instance is stopped. Then central instance is stopped. In central instance, first dispatcher with a number of purposes are stopped. Then only message server is stopped. Then database is stopped. Finally, voice character is stopped. Okay, so this is a quite opposite of SAP startup process. Okay, so this is a sequence SAP stop sequence. So, first dialog if we have if we have dialog instance the dialog instance is stopped then the central instance is stopped then database then operating system collector voice collector so this is a sequence okay this is but the thing is so at the time of sap startup process so we, uh, we are no need to intimate to any other person at the time of sap Server startup process, but here without uh, intimation, whenever we stop the server, so uh, we got uh, so many problems. Okay, so that's why SAP stop process. So, if you want to go to SAP stop, we need to follow some procedure. In SAP stop process, we have some procedure is there. So, first we need to follow the procedure, then only. We are going to stop the server. This is not easy like uh, SAP start startup. At the time of SAP startup, uh, no need to intimate any other person. Okay, but uh, so if you want to go to stop SAP server stop, compulsory we need to follow the procedure. Okay, what is the procedure before stop the before stop SAP? What is the procedure we need to follow? So before stop SAP, uh, we need to follow some procedure. procedure.
okay compulsory we need to follow this procedure okay so what is the procedure the first point is the first one is we need to check out how many users are logged in the first point is so check out check out the login on users so check out the number of logged on users by using we have a t code for this process we have a t code sm04 sm04 is the t code for check out the number of users how many number of users are logged in okay so this is the first point so check out number of logged on users by using sm04 we'll discuss i will i will show you but be, before that uh, so we check out that we'll discuss the remaining points also and next one after checking the number of how many number of users are logged in project logged in uh, we need to send system messages to all logged on users users by using sm02 sm02 okay so next point is we need to suspend all background jobs in sc38 by using program btc tr ns1 okay so see here so first we need to check out how many number of number of users are logged in present so in our server ds4 server how many users are logged in okay first we need to check and after that after check the users uh, we need to send the system messages for example so 200 members are logged in okay so we need to send the system messages not only individual so whenever we create a message the message goes to all logged on users not not individually the message goes to all users all logged on users etc and we need to suspend all background jobs okay so the background jobs which are in schedule so we need to suspend now up to restart the server okay for this process we have a t code ac38 in that t code we need to so run the program btc trns1 okay so whenever we we run the btc trns1 the jobs are the background jobs are going to pass mode suspend mode that is nothing but suspend mode okay after restart the server we release the background jobs okay so this is uh, the first point so first check out the first point
so first point i am going to check out how many users are logged in present uh, for this purpose i am going to enter sm04 this is the key code you need to use sm04 uh, see here uh, i think two users are logged in two users are logged in one user from 000 this is the client number triple is the client number uh, one user from 900 means so, so we are the uh, person 900 uh, another user his name is uh, narendra so present we are logged in so our name is narendra one his, his user is uh, different uh, this user is different okay so he is from a uh, laptop so we are from desktop okay so two users are logged on with uh, so see here to log on with the two sessions and what happened so whenever I refresh this one so the user narendra so narendra using t codes are displayed here just refresh yes see here uh, i think just he is logged in only but he is not uh, using any t code that's why it, it is not shows and here sm04 present we are using sm04 that's why it shows sm04 got it so this is so this is a first point we need to send the system message uh, the, this is a, uh, how to check out the all users the so logged on users okay this is a first point in second point we need to we need to send the system message send the system message to all active users so for this purpose we have a t code that is sm02 so by using this uh, t code we can send the system message to all logged on users not only not individual so the message goes to all active users sm02 yeah so the list contains no data means so up to now no messages are are available okay so I'm going to create the message. See here the second one. Create option is the, this is create option, this is the refresh option. Okay, this is include option, this is a change display option, this is a delete option, this is print out option. So just click on first one. So we got a pop-up window. So here we need to enter. So we are going to stop ds4 server if you have any work please reschedule okay so i think uh, Okay, so one meaningful message. One meaningful message. Yeah. Uh, okay, okay. So one meaningful message so if you have any work please reschedule and see here so this is not only for one person this is for all persons who, who are logged in the server presenter so here uh, we need to select the server name and the client number so uh, so we are present we are in 900 client actually we are we are in 900 clients see here 
this is this is SID name, this is client number. So that we are in 900 client. From 900 client, we can send system messages to any other client users. So I mean, so so 800. If you want to send the messages to users which are logged in 800, this is possible. So here we need to enter the client number. So for which client we want to create this message? So English language is English and expire and delete on. So we have two options. Okay, expire on. So here it shows 23 hours and 0 0 0 0 means so today at midnight to 11 p.m. the message is still alive but the thing is uh, we have a schedule time is uh, 5 p.m. okay at any cost uh, we need to restart the server at uh, 7 p.m. but uh, display see here 11 p.m. means so uh, expire and means that the message is expired on today 11 p.m. so what happened here whenever we, we are not changed the time what happened up to 11 p.m. the message goes to all users if I restart the server 7 p.m. the message goes to all users why because we are not the we are not the change time the server is uh, we, we stopped 5 p.m. that is restarted at 7 p.m. The, but the message this is the message the message is goes to all users up to 11 p.m. why because we are not changed the time okay so depends on the requirement we need to change the time compulsory here we need to change so in the place of 23 we need to assign 7 pm only okay experiment after 7 pm the message will not be go will not comes to any other user the, the message is expired so next one is the delete what is delete after expire the message is still available in this in this place in this place the message is still available okay after after one month means so February 3rd the message is automatically deleted that is nothing but to delete on if we delete manually no problem otherwise you can leave it after one month automatically that is deleted okay so this is expire and delete on the message expire and the message delete on if you delete it manually no problem otherwise after one month system will delete this message Okay, but the thing is we have a schedule at 5 p.m. for stop the SAP server. We need to start from 4 p.m. onwards. Why? Because at 5 p.m. First we need to check out the users and we need to send the message. Okay, the thing is okay, but the users are they are immediately they are not logged out. Why? Because they are in middle middle of the work. That's why they are not so like they are not uh, lost their work. That's why we, we need to perform before one hour means so for 4 pm onwards we need to start this process after like uh, so whenever we reach 5 pm so the users are logged out okay then we start the process got it so this is uh, how to start sap and stop sap and what is the procedure we need to follow and one more thing we need to suspend the background jobs also so actually we have no time so that's why we'll discuss our next session uh, so how to suspend background jobs uh, all background jobs how to suspend all background jobs and uh, the further concepts will discuss on uh, next session